Roxo Media House. Welcome to day two of Big 12 Media Days. Brought to you by Railhead Smokehouse in Fort Worth. On today's show... It's been just like you would expect. The fire hose is fully inserted uh, in my mouth here. And uh, we've been blown and gone. First year head coaches take center stage. I tell you, uh, a lot of y'all know me. I believe that they would buy in to what we were going to do, but I didn't think it was going to be as fast as it has been. Including TCU's Sunny Dykes. I think it's a great opportunity. Um, uh, it's a fantastic university. It's a university that cares deeply about football. Also, Texas head coach Steve Sarkeesian talks about former TCU head coach Gary Patterson. I've always been intrigued by Coach Patterson from afar. Right now, with your host, the voice of the Horned Frogs. Brian Estridge. Welcome into AT&T Stadium here tonight for this day two of the Big 12 Media Days. Our special here from Frogs today presented by our friends at Railhead Smokehouse. is uh, Coming up a little bit later on, Jeremiah Donati, the athletic director of TCU, is going to join us. Uh, we got a whole bunch of TCU football players that are going to stop by and some insight as well from our experts who have been here for the last two days of Big 12 Media Days here at AT&T Stadium. But we start the show with the head coach of the Horned Frogs, Sunday. Dykes, who gets to experience now Big 12 Media Days for the first time. Coach, what do you think? Well, it's good to be here at AT&T Stadium. I mean, this is uh, this is where it all starts with Media Day, where it all ends with the Big 12 Championship. So it's pretty cool that way that it, uh, that it all takes place here. And um, But it's exciting. I mean, it's a great time to be here. Everybody's optimistic. Everybody feels good about their football teams. You know, it's a little bit like signing day. I'm ready. One of these days, I'm hopeful I can stay in, in college football long enough to see have a coach stand up there and go, you know, I think our team's going to stink this year. I really feel bad about the <laughs> right, year. <right. laughs> but didn't hear that so far no. yet. I don't know if it's going to happen. But, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to be here. It's, it's, to me, it's always kind of the signal that college football is right around the corner. And I know uh, everybody's excited about that, and certainly no one's more excited than I am. I, I don't know what to read into this, but you you address the media, and uh, Steve Scarkeesian's doing it right now. You were you were just before him, and you were the, you were the first coach so far in the two days that they've actually had to cut you off. Not you personally, but the fact that you had so many questions, so much anticipation. I think that may be sort of a, a theme for the year. There are questions going in for everyone, aren't there? Yeah, it's probably more than anything else just because I'm long-winded. <laughs> but, no, I mean, look, there's year one's always interesting. Yeah. You know, I think um, it's it's funny. You take over a program and you have this perception of what it's going to be, and it's never quite what you think it's going to be. Um, then you've, you know, then you kind of go through spring ball and, and it becomes a little bit more of what you thought your vision was. And then hopefully during fall camp at some point, you know, you, you walk off the practice field and you go, okay, look, I feel pretty good about this football team. And so that's that's where you want to get to. Um, you know, I've said this, and I really believe it. I feel like we're ahead of where I thought we'd be at this point. You know, I really do. I think that uh, you just look at our players and some of the development physically, the buy-in has been everything that I've asked for and then some. Uh, so that makes, makes it exciting to, to do that. You know, this is my fourth time to take over a program. And so I've got a little bit of a perspective on what it looks like, and and uh, I could, can't say enough about our players. Just where those guys have been incredible in terms of the way that they've done everything we've asked them to do. So, you know, it's an exciting time, but you know, at the end of the day, we've got to, uh, you know, we've got to go out there and play at a high level consistently, and and you know, we got to deal with adversity, and we got to see all those questions. Uh, we've got to find answers for them all, and, and as of today, you know, we don't know any of those yet. There are uh, three first-time head coaches in the league. Not first time, but first time in the Big 12, right. obviously. Uh, and that's in kind of the theme here today is, uh, you know, what kind of effect does that have on the league? I, I, get it, I guess in coaches' minds, it's, a, it's the fear of the unknown maybe, huh? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think, uh, you know, when you look around the league a little bit, I think that, you know, it shows you, number one, that people are committed to winning yeah. in this league. You know, I think that, um, you know, it's important to these schools that they're successful in football. And I think all of them understand that. I think they all are investing in football. And I think that's why I feel as strongly as I do about the Big 12 right now. Because, you know, I've been in conferences in the past where, you know, that investment didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And it certainly didn't exist with every team. And I think when you look around our league right now, you can feel really good about 
you know, how, how important football is to all of these institutions. And at the end of the day, that's where it all starts, you know, because you're not going to have success if you don't have investment. And so we've got that. Now we have a, a bunch of really good coaches in the league. We've got a bunch of really good players. And now we've got to go out and, and, you know, put a good product in the field as a league and then continue to do it and do it over and over again and get that consistency that you want the league to have. And, you know, and it's like anything else. Then what's next is all of a sudden you start winning big games and you get into big bowl games and you win those. And then, you know, you, starts to, you start to stack those and then the league gets more and more credibility. You're, uh, you're picked seventh in the preseason poll. I've told everyone in 20 years here, to me, this is the, this is the hardest preseason poll. I think you could take them all, shuffle them up in a cup, pull them out, and it would have been just as, just as accurate as what we're going to see them. Uh, do you get that sense as well? And what does number seven in the preseason poll mean? I mean, it doesn't really mean anything to yeah. me. I mean, I think that, um, and it wouldn't mean anything to me if we were tenth, and it wouldn't mean anything to me if we were first. I mean, truthfully, I mean, I, I don't, like you said, I don't know that anybody knows. No. Look, I, I, I do this every day for 16, 18 hours a day, and, and I have no idea. Right. And that's just the way college football is, and particularly in a league where there's a lot of changes going on, um, you know, where the traditional powerhouse has been Oklahoma, you know, where now they've got a coaching change in Oklahoma. And how many coaching changes have they had in Oklahoma in the last 30 years? Right. Two? Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, very few. And so there just hasn't been a lot of changes um, in the league and some of these some of these programs. And so, you know, I think year after year after year, Oklahoma's been the prohibitive favorite because they've been the one that's done it. And then, you know, and then you look at Texas. They traditionally have had a lot of success and, you know, went five and seven last year. And so there's – there's a lot of question marks. You know, Baylor, I think, was picked eighth last year, won the league. You know, they've got a lot of guys coming back. And you just start looking around the league, and, and you can't help but say there's a lot of good football teams. There's a very slim margin of difference between those programs and those teams. You know, there's a lot of successful coaches in the league, guys that have won at very, a lot of different levels, you know, and, and guys that know how to win and guys that I think are going to, you know, get their teams to, to, to be successful. And so, you know, there's going to be a lot of toss-ups on these Saturdays yep. in this league, week in, week out. I don't know that there's going to be a dominant team. There might be. We'll see. But, um, you know, coming in, I don't know that I see that, but we'll kind of see how it plays out. The over-under coming into this event was 30 on the number of times you'd be asked about the quarterback. Yep. Have we gotten over it yet? Uh, we're under right now, we? but, but, but we're early. It's yeah, still exactly. early. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you say? To, I mean, what can you say? I mean, you, you've got uh, – you got practice starting August one. That's when, that's when you start to figure it out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what's funny is, whenever you have these quarterback competitions, um, you know a lot of times it, it plays out exactly the way this has played out. Yeah. You've got a couple of guys that go through spring ball. They both make a case yep. for themselves to be the starter in the spring, and uh, so you roll into the summer and you go, well, you know, we'll see how it goes in the summer. And then once fall camp starts, lo and behold, somebody usually takes the reins. Mm -hmm. Something usually happens over the summer that, you know, changes the, the quarterback competition. And, you know, my, you know, my hope and my uh, guess is that that's going to occur, you know, and 8, 10, 12 practices in, we'll have a pretty good idea of, of who it's going to be. And the sooner the better so that we can start prepping, yeah. you know, so we can start getting ready for that Colorado game and, and figure out, okay, this is our guy. What does he like? What does he not like? What's his strengths? What's his weaknesses? And start to develop our offensive game plan around him and, and what he's capable of doing. Have you always had competition at quarterback? I, I, I bring that up because I'm thinking Jared Goff. Was he ever pushed at Cal? Yeah, so, you know, it's funny. When Jared, Jared graduated from high school early, yeah. came in as a true freshman, at the end of spring ball he was fourth. Okay. Because we had some really highly regarded quarterbacks, you know, at Cal. Right. So we get into fall camp. He, about a weekend, is third. Okay. Okay. Then about another weekend, he's second. And then, you know, it becomes pretty obvious about the third week of fall camp, he's the first. Well, we started a true freshman quarterback. That was the first time in the history of Cal football mm -hmm. that they had done that. And. Had you asked me in the spring if he had an opportunity to play, I would have said there's not a chance in hell. Mm -hmm. I would have said there's no way. <laughs> yeah, he, there's no not any chance he's going to be the starting quarterback. He ended up being the starter, and you know the first ended up being the first pick in the draft, and you know was very successful. So, 
you know, you know how it is. I mean, these guys change. They change sure. quickly. So much of playing that position is confidence. Yep. You know, and, and the guy that can develop that confidence and, you know, again, make the guys around him better is the one who it's going to be. Final thought. Um, what would your dad think about Big 12 Media Day? What, what would he think about all this? Yeah, he'd get a kick out of he, it. He'd I think, like it. Yeah, right? yeah, he would. I mean, I think, look, he, he's a Big 12 guy. Yeah. You know, he was a Southwest Conference guy for, for a number of years. and, and That's where they used to do the tour, right? Was, they, used yeah. to, they used to go to Lubbock. They'd yeah. get on a bus and all the media guys <laughs> would show up. and Yeah. Yeah. And so it was, yeah, go eat at the 50-yard line. Yeah, exactly. Stuff, yeah. yeah. So, Blueberry muffins. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah. Well, they're good, good too. Stuff. Um, but uh, you know, it, it, he, he'd get a kick out of it I mean, because look, he, you know, he appreciated Texas football. Yeah. You know, and and I have a tremendous appreciation yeah. for it. You know, I think the the thing that was kind of a blessing for me in some ways was to leave Texas really for ten years and go coach different places. Um, you know, ten consecutive years, three in Arizona, four in California, three in Louisiana, and that I think showed me just how important football is in Texas and what it means to the state of Texas and and how comfortable I am being in Texas and being around these high school coaches and these high school players and you know because it's just it's just part of the fabric of of being a Texan Mm -hmm. and uh, in it's incredibly important to the DFW Metroplex to to have great football you know I mean look at this place you know when you look at the Big 12 headquarters are here you look at the you know, you look at the fact that we have media day here. You look at the championship mm-hmm. game is here. I mean, DFW is really the hub of Big 12 football. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and we're blessed to be in DFW uh, and be a part of it because really uh, it gives us tons of opportunity and tons of, of potential that we can build on. Does that put extra pressure on you because of all that? Do you allow yourself to think of, wow, the heritage, the history, the importance, all of this? You know, I think if you do, it can be a little bit overwhelming. Yeah. I think what you got to do is you just have to do the very best you can do every day. Are you, you going to stay in the moment? Do you stay in the moment? Oh, I'm getting better. I think yeah. the older I get, the, the better I get at doing that. I think, uh, you know, one of the things that, that I'll never forget for me, and, and I think as a, as a young head coach, this was a little bit of a weakness, you know, I was I was coaching at Cal. We went to Austin, and we were gonna we beat Texas, mm-hmm. okay. And so we had just started to get good as a football program at Cal. So we roll into Austin. They were heavily favored. We win the game, and I'll never forget walking across to shake Charlie Strong's hand. And the next week, we were going to Washington to play Chris Peterson mm-hmm. in Washington, who was really good. And I remember taking about three steps on the field in Austin to go shake his hand. And immediately my attention went to, oh man, we got to go to Washington next week. We have a lot of stuff to get ready for. Wow. And so, you know, you can't let that happen to yourself as a coach. You know, you've got to, you've got to enjoy those games and those big wins. Uh, you have to appreciate them. You know, you have to allow yourself to, to, you know, to, to celebrate for just a minute before you move on to the next thing. And and I'm working on doing that. You know, I think that, you know, I'm trying to learn to love winning as much as I hate losing. Right. And um, I'm not there yet, but I'm but I'm trying to get there. I'm looking forward to August second, in Colorado. I, I know you were probably excited as well. Yeah, I am too. You know, I, I, there's I'm excited about this team. Yeah. I really like these players, and you know, I'm just excited to see how they respond. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, they've worked incredibly hard. We've had a great off season, and and you know, I'm just kind of uh, excited to see where where we fall in, in this big picture of the Big 12. Thanks for giving us some time today. Appreciate it. Glad Always to be here. Appreciate it. Sonny Dykes, the head football coach here at TCU. we got a big show lined up for you. The athletic director, Jeremiah Donati, is going to be by. We're going to talk to TCU players, give you some insight into what it's like here at Big 12 Media Day. Day two for a lot of first-year head coaches. We'll talk to them as well. So we continue here. It's presented by Railhead Smokehouse, live from AT&T Stadium. And back we come after this timeout. Frogs Today Big 12 Media Day Special brought to you by Railhead Smokehouse. Simply the best barbecue in Fort Worth. Dine-in, catering, or drive through 2900 Montgomery, just off I-30. Remember, the best barbecue in Fort Worth is at Railhead Smokehouse. Big 12 Media Days live in Arlington today here at Jerry World, AT&T Stadium site of this one. As we welcome you back in, Brian Estridge alongside Travis Hodges, Tomlinson, Trey's along with us. By the way, our event today presented by our friends at Railhead Smokehouse. Good to see you, man. You look like you're cool in it, ready to go. How you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling great. Yeah? Uh, 
offseason has been going well, you know. The team, the team is loving it. Everyone's getting bigger and faster. So I'm just ready to present, you know, to show and showcase the new, you know what I'm saying, offense and defenses that we have and, you know, the new players that have come about that can help, you know, impact, have an impact on our team and, you know, have success this season. Trey, you fought your way into uh, into uh, the, the lineup as a freshman. I remember that. And, and people didn't know if you were going to play or not. Now you look on it and you're a leader. I mean, you're, you're a leader on this team. Did it happen like you thought it would? Oh, yes, sir. You know, I've always had confidence in myself, my abilities, you know, no matter the cause, you know. And uh, I've always been a person. I've always been an underdog. I've always been a person to overcome adversity and prove others wrong, you know. And as long as, you know, I get the opportunity, I will continue to do so. As long as God gives me another opportunity every day to come out, you know, to showcase and be able to present myself and play this game of football, I will continue to prove others wrong. You know, and that's what I've been doing my whole life. Well, you've done a nice job of it so far, and you get a chance this year with Joe Gillespie as your defensive coordinator. Uh, give me some sense as to how this new scheme will work for you and how you'll benefit from it. Uh, they're now using me as a lockdown cornerback, so which means that I'll be following the best receiver every game. So whoever it is, I'll take them away. I think you're okay with that, aren't you? Oh, yeah, I'm in love with that. Yeah, but so, man, <laughs> all over the field. Hey, tell me how, uh, you know, you go up against a guy like Quentin Johnson every day in yes, practice, sir. and he's here uh, for Big 12 Media Days as well. How does that prep you? How does that get you ready for going up against that top wide receiver every every week? Uh, it continues. It builds on to my confidence that I already have, you know. Uh, as long as I'm covering Quentin during practice, I know that, you know, I'm not worried about no other receiver going into no game, so. You know, practicing against Quinn every day, it helps me, you know what I'm saying? It builds my, you know, my inner, you know, being as far as being a confident player that I am. And as long as I, you know, know that I'm constantly going against Quinn, the best receiver in the nation during practices, I'm not worried about no other receiver. You, uh, obviously we know about your uncle and going to TCU. There is something about, though, TCU to you. It means a little something more, doesn't it? I mean, this yes, is this is your school. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, having my uncle go here and then him lead on his legacy and then, you know, now I'm starting to have my, you know, build a name for myself. It's been nothing but great and, you know, I'm thankful that CCU has accepted me for a trade, you know, not just LT's nephew. You know, I've made a name for myself now and, I just want to continue to do so and be a great person, not only on the field, but off the field. Now it's a race to see what Tomlinson can get a statue built first outside the stadium. What do you think, man? <laughs> man, you my, know? yeah, my OG, man, he, 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 can, he can get that, man. He, he's, <laughs> he's done much more in life than me. Yeah, and I'm just chasing him. You know, I'm, Keep chasing I'm trying him, to, Yeah, I'm trying to, you know, someday – be set for life just like him and yeah. achieve everything that he has achieved. You know, he's done so much in life that everyone knows about. But he's been a he's a Hall of Famer of all three levels of football. Sure. And I just pray that someday I'll be able to say the same. Well, with your hard work, man, that's what matters. You yes, know, sir. that's what it comes down to. You know that. Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, no one can question your work ethic. One last thing uh, I, w- I want to get into, your your thoughts on being picked seventh. Uh, I'm a, I, I get the sense this team's okay with that, you know, kind of live in the darkness a little bit, huh? Uh, I mean, I feel like it's – me personally, it's disrespectful. Yeah. But then again, I like it, though, you know. But then again, at the end of the day, everyone knows what TCU's coming with, so they like, man, they're going to they gonna see the rankings and they're going to be like, all right, it's TCU, they, they seven. But when we come on the field, they're going to be like, no, nah, this TCU, we know what they're about. Like, we're going to have to come with it. Right. And as long as they know that – then they're going to have the level of respect for us no matter the ranking. Yeah. So we're going to come out, we're going to prove them wrong. I mean, that's what we're here to do. And what it's looking like right now as far as the way spring has went, you know, we'll continue to build on from that. Everyone everyone on the team looks different. You know, we're not going to be the same team that we were last year, the year before, none of that. You know, I feel like we have a chance of doing some really great things here this upcoming season, and then it'll help the younger guys, and then TCU will be a, a whole different team a decade from now. You know, someday TCU will be talked about as, you know, the top two, you know, whatever it is, teams in, in the country. I'm looking forward to that day, man. Yes, sir. You're a part of it. Thank you for coming by.
Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Trey Hodges Tomlinson joining us here. It is our Big 12 Media Day special presented by our friends at Railhead Smokehouse live here at AT AT&T Stadium today. More to come after this time out. The Flying Tea Club provides the everyday TCU fan and alum the ability to specifically support TCU student athletes. Flying Tea Club offers three levels of memberships. The Flying Tea Club is a nonprofit organization supporting the brand development of TCU student athletes through a series of unique event based networking opportunities, which are exclusive to our members. These events provide a great social engagement tool for our members and student athletes alike. Follow them on Instagram at Flying Tea Club or online at flyingteaclub.com. AT&T Stadium site of this, the Big 12 Media Days for 2022. Our special brought to us by our friends at the Railhead Smokehouse. We welcome you back in here to Jerry World. Brian Estridge with you. And, of course, we've got Quentin Johnston alongside now, the terrific wide receiver of the Horn Frogs. Quentin, welcome in to AT&T Stadium. And you'd like to be playing here in December, oh, yes, right, sir, in that sure. championship for game. Sure. For sure, yes, sir. Yeah, it's a good spot. Uh, you, you think about it over the years, and the Horn Frogs have been in that mix, been close. Feels like this. Yeah. Group this year, sure. something about this group sure. has that challenge to get here, right? Oh yes, sir. And, and, and shoot, like you said, you know, like through yeah. the years, it's, it's been close, but never there. You know, that's just you know, that's just extra feel, feels off our, uh, you know, going into this year, extra motivation, you know, because I mean, like at the end of the day, why not us? Yeah. So you know, like that's a mindset going in day, uh, day in and day out through, through workouts, through um, you know, just different stuff of that nature, team bonding, you know, everything from on the field to off the field is it's all incorporated into one big goal. So, Quentin, give me some idea about how this offense has changed mm-hmm. under Garrett Riley yeah. for the better. Yeah. What do you like about it? For sure. And then um I mean I mean I mean like obviously you know coming off the past few years we had you know a pretty good offense too yeah. but um uh, I feel like you know like they're incorporating more you know like um uh, more of an air raid style uh, type mm-hmm. of offense, which obviously I like. You know, it's good for me and my yeah. receivers. You know, tight ends and everything like that. So you know, I mean, like if, uh, I feel like it's going to be you know real good. You know, um, you know more targets, more catches, um, obviously, um, which is which is which is a good upside for you know me and my uh, teammates. So I mean, at the end of the day, um, I feel like it's going to you know uh, benefit uh, all of us. Um, through receivers, running backs, and quarterbacks too. So and, and let's like don't it. let's don't lose sight because this I think this offense still wants to run the football. For sure, don't they? for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. We got you know you know we got we got big running backs returning. So you know um um, um and I say air raid offense, not to sleep on them because no, no, you know because no. you know uh, I mean like obviously we're gonna be putting the ball in the air more, but you know we get tired too, and then oh, like, yeah. you know we get tired, we're gonna be right on the outside right. block for you know great running backs. Yeah, I was gonna say you got a guy like Kendrick, got to give him the football. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, there's for something sure. to be said about that. Sure. When you think about it too, the tight ends have become more mm-hmm. involved. Oh, in yeah. this offense. Yeah. It may not be traditional and then that uh, tight set. It might be split out, mm-hmm. but they can be real weapons in this sure, offense. For sure, they? for sure, and which is going to be a, a big part of our offense this year, too, um, not only because I say air raid, not only throwing to the outside and inside, right. but the tight ends is going to be, you know, a, a, you know, a big, a big, a big part of for us uh, this year. So I'm very confident in them, and, and they're very confident in, uh, in themselves, too. Give me some sense, too, when you think about this group and how this offense has come together as to, you know, when you, when you, when you think about this offensive line, it's to drive yeah. things. They seem to set the tone yeah, for this for sure. offense, and I think this might be the best offensive line in the league. For sure. I mean, you know, like obviously there is no there is no throwing, there is no running without the offensive line. So that that, that is the base heart and soul of our offense. So you know, um, you know, uh, they ha- they have a lot of pride in themselves, and obviously we have a lot of pride and trust in them too. So um, uh, obviously, like you said, you know, I feel I feel you know you know very strongly that they are one of the best uh, offensive linemen you know in this league. And um, like I said again, I'm very confident in them. Uh, you know, you, uh, 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 going into this next season, you uh, you get a lot of attention from defenses. Mm-hmm. You're going to get more for sure this year. Uh-huh. Tell me, how does that make you feel? What do you think mm-hmm. of that? Do you have to prepare for it? I mean, um, I mean, like obviously, if I was a if I was a freshman, I'd be look, uh, you know a little shaken up. But it's nothing I haven't already seen, you know, heard. You know, obviously, you know, um, um, uh, I take pride in being a big receiver. You know, I, I um, uh, like you said, I do get you know like a lot of you know recognition for being you know a receiver. But I mean, like at, uh, you know, like at the end of the day, it's just, it's still football. You know, you, you know, like they plan for us, and then we plan for them to you know kind of you know uh, on certain plays, you know, double team or do whatever. But um, at the end of the day, if I get double team, somebody else gets opened up. So you know, that's the you know that's the good thing about you know the game of football team sports so i like it it's all about w's yes, sir, it's sure. all about w sunny dykes has won a bunch of games for sure o- over the years yes, uh, how's that transition been for you oh uh, it's been good you know obviously with the new coach not not just new coach but the whole coaching staff strength right. and condition staff you know it takes it takes a little bit of time to, you know get used to and 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 once you get used to you know I'm, i mean like they've only been around us a few months but it's, 
it takes a lot to you know just build that trust up. Which you know I feel like they've you know uh, 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 done a good job of doing that. Um, you know, and like building that trust with us, you know, it, it makes us more confident um, as a team on and off the field. Like I said, you know, like the team bond and stuff, you know, has a you know a big part of uh, um, of, of a football team, not not just on the field stuff. Because I'm mean, like, if you if you together on the time on the field and then go off the field and don't do anything, I mean, like, are you you know are you really a team like you say you are? And, you know, I feel like he's you know like incorporated a lot of uh, team bond stuff at his house. You know, just like different events for us. So I mean, it's been big for us, and you know, we're excited about it. All right, man, I'm excited about the year. Yes, I know you are too. Thank you so much. All right. Quentin Johnston joining us here on Frogs Day. We've got a lot more still to come. we got Frog players. Sonny Dyke's going to stop by as well as we continue here. Live at AT&T Stadium, it's our Big 12 Media Day special on Frogs Today, presented by Railhead Smokehouse. Simply the best barbecue in Fort Worth. With a spectacular menu of heaping plates of ribs, sliced beef, fries, and cheddar peppers. And of course, their world-famous ice-cold schooners of beer and margaritas. Dine in, cater, or drive through from the barbecue landmark at 2900 Montgomery, just off I-30. Remember, the best barbecue in Fort Worth is at Railhead Smokehouse. Home of the Sunny Dykes Radio Show Mondays at 6 p.m. Railhead Smokehouse, simply the best barbecue in Fort Worth. Winding down day two here of the 2022 Big 12 Media Days at AT&T Stadium here in Arlington. Welcome back in. I'm Brian Estridge. Uh, our show presented today by our friends at Railhead Smokehouse, the athletic director, Jeremiah Donati, carving out some time for us. Happy to be here. Thanks Good for having you, me. man. I'm uh, glad. You know, when uh, when we get to this point, we know football is right around the corner, don't we? It's, it's game on. Yeah. You know, we just saw Coach Dykes there up on the podium, and uh, he did a fantastic job. I know you guys covered that, uh, covered it well. But, no, it's uh, it's the countdown's officially on. I think we're inside of 60 days, and so it won't be long before we're kicking off here in Boulder. You know, when you hear these players today, when you hear Coach Dykes, you feel the excitement. You feel it start to generate, start to bubble up. And I'm hearing that from fans as well. Are, is that making its way to you? Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, the hard part is obviously the news of the last couple of weeks is uh, new commissioner, conference realignment. So if you kind of set that stuff aside for a second, you go, holy smokes, we're inside of two months for football. But, no, you're starting to feel it. You know, the guys are working out every day. Uh, the coaches are back from their brief vacation. And, and uh, you know, Sonny did let them take vacation, right. which I think is really cool. I think everybody probably needed a break after yeah. the – after the start they got off to. I mean, they've just been going a 1,000 miles an hour. So, now we're, we're everybody's fired up, ready to go. We tell everybody July is the, is the only month that we don't play any games. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Once August 1 comes, it is a, it's go time. Yeah. So, it's basically August 1. It is. You mentioned the new uh, commissioner for the Big 12. takes a, uh, He takes effect, I guess, August 1. But uh, Brett Yormark uh, is a guy that I, I, you, you, you look at his resume, and I am intrigued by his history and what he's going to bring to the table yeah I'll tell you what and and maybe it's my the, the fact that I was a lawyer in yeah. another life but one of the things I felt was fascinating was in his time with the the Nets when he moved the team from New Jersey to, to Brooklyn, mm -hmm. you know, they had this huge eminent domain issue, and they had to move out all these really rich people <laughs> right. to build the Barclays Center. Yeah. So I thought, man, any guy who can pull that off uh, has got some serious business acumen and some chops and probably some pretty thick skin. So, no, he's going to be fantastic. Uh, really excited to meet him officially. We've had a number of phone calls and, and uh, Zoom calls, but, no, he's off to a great start. I just really love his energy and the, the bold uh, – um, uh, the, the bold uh, strategies we're going to yep. employ and all the, all the ways in which we're going to uh, increase the value of this conference and bring more value to the members. You know what else intrigued me was the fact that here's a guy who raised $750 million in corporate sponsorships for NASCAR, and he sat right here yesterday and told us, I wasn't really a NASCAR fan. Uh, you know, and if you can sell it and you're not a fan of it, that's pretty good. Yeah, isn't it? The, the word on the street is that he's like the best salesman you'll yes, ever find. Yes. So, uh, no, he's fantastic, and he's, he's one of these guys that you know sleeps three hours a night right. wakes up works out and right now he's working two jobs right he's still technically at rock nation but he's working you know the other 21 hours of the day for the big 12 <laughs> so now he he's going to be fantastic and l like everything in life you know it's timing and i think the timing is perfect for a guy like him to be our commissioner so we're all you know all 14 of us are really excited he's here you know the one thing that i've taken away from the last two days here with regard to conf conferences expansion is if someone tells you they know what's going to happen, 
they don't know. <laughs> they Is don't know. We've seen every model to all the fans out there. I've seen every model. I've seen. I've been asked to get us in every conference. I've been asked to add every team there is. And, and, and the reality is, is there's. It, it's just going to take a little time. This is going to come down to media value. Yeah. And so, and I mean that from the membership perspective, uh, each member, and also the conference. So it's just not something's going to happen overnight. Um, I do think that we're in a great position. I mean TCU, and I mean the Big 12, and we're going to do things that add value. You. And the commissioner was very, um, very firm on that. We're not going to be dilutive. We're going to be additive. And I think that that's very important for fans to understand that everyone's got a scenario they, they've fallen in love with. And some of those are really cool matchups. But does it add value? Because remember, our television media rights deals are the biggest source of revenue for us outside of, of uh, the live gate tickets and parking. And so it's incredibly important for all of us to sustain our programs. You have been uh, on the run, really, for four and a half years, it feels like. Uh, do you get the sense heading into this year, new football coach, Jamie Dixon's team returning all that it is, new volleyball coach, do you almost even feel re-energized? Because I do. I, I, I do, and, and I, we we're all excited to start playing uh, sports in the fall. Um, you know, I, I would say this, and, and I'm, I'm proud of the things we've done in my time here, but even the investments that we've made before before then, five the last five, 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. I think they're starting to show they're starting to bear fruit. Yeah, and so uh, we've got really good coaches. We've got a great staff. We're well supported. Uh, I'm just I'm really bullish on the future. But it, it especially this year, Coach Dykes and his team have done a wonderful job getting us ready. We've got a bunch of newcomers, but we've got a lot of talent coming yes. back. We've got a great coaching staff, and just if you're on campus, you can feel that magic. Even with nobody on campus right, right now, there's just a there's just a little magic in the air right now. And so uh, it's a great time to be a horned frog it always is but especially now i think people are excited about the 2022 2023 uh, academic and athletic years september 2nd in boulder against colorado on a friday night that's gonna be a great atmosphere oh, it is and for those uh, frog fans that are going Folsom field is awesome yes. i mean it, it, it's fantastic I, I've, I've been fortunate to go i've got some family members that are cu grads and i've been i've gone to probably 10 games over the course of my life and just an awesome venue a night game a friday night espn i mean what a cool start for 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 the for the St. dykes era and for our student athletes uh, uh i know a lot of frogs are traveling right. so this this will be a good one this will be one not to miss all right i look forward to it jeremiah thanks for the time here today thanks for having me pl pleasure to be with you brian all right brother that's jeremiah donati the athletic director here at tcu more to come here frogs today special presented by railhead smokehouse live at at&t stadium for big 12 media days we're back in a minute the Flying Tea Club provides the everyday TCU fan and alum the ability to specifically support TCU student athletes. Flying Tea Club offers three levels of memberships. The Flying Tea Club is a nonprofit organization supporting the brand development of TCU student athletes through a series of unique event based networking opportunities, which are exclusive to our members. These events provide a great social engagement tool for our members and student athletes alike. Follow them on Instagram at Flying Tea Club or online at flyingteaclub.com. Back to wrap things up here at uh, Big 12 Media Days, presented by our friends at Railhead Smokehouse, the 2022 edition at AT&T Stadium here in Arlington. Brian Estridge, welcome you back in here. Filled level as the day winds down. It has been a busy couple of days, obviously, as our roundtable of experts can attest. They've been busy pumping out stories at frogstoday.com and on social media. We hope that you've had a chance to check that out. Jeff Wilson's with us. Jamie Plunkett's with us as well. And Melissa Tribwasser with us. Good to see you, Melissa. It's great to be here. It's been a lot of fun uh, seeing and hearing from all of these uh, uh, Big 12 teams and coaches. And we're hearing from a lot of first-year guys, three of them to be exact, that we had a chance to, to hear from today. That's kind of the theme of this event, if you will. It's the, the, the expectations of the first year, and really, I think, from a lot of the other guys, the questions going in as to what they're going to be like in that first year. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that was a common theme is what a privilege it is to get to coach at this level, to be a Big 12 football coach, but then also how you only get one opportunity to be a first-time head coach. Uh, Brent Venable called it you know drinking from the hot the fire hose but maybe in a little bit <laughs> more awkward way yes <laughs> uh, but but I think just the energy and the enthusiasm that each of those three guys is bringing to their individual programs I mean we've seen it with Joey McGuire at Tech obviously Sonny Dykes has, has really infused the culture at TCU um, and Brett Medibles who's familiar to Oklahoma fans is just bringing a championship pedigree
history after his time at, at uh, Clemson. You know, and Venables is a guy, Jeff Wilson, that uh, if you think about it, brings a lot of energy, but he also uh, comes now with a lot of pressure on him. That Oklahoma job, premier job, that doesn't change over very often, and right. when it does, they expect you to step right in and win. Sure, it's it's. Uh you, I mean, you said it. I mean, this is a this is the blue blood of blue buds. I right. mean, it's it's right up there with Michigan, Texas, Notre Dame. I mean, it's that kind of job. And um, you know, I, it, they kept it in the family. You know, they they went back and got him, brought him from Clemson, where he was under a lot of pressure because now they have perennial expectations. So maybe that helps him out. Um, but you know, the, the guy the guy can flat talk. Yeah. He got asked four questions. All right four questions and he spent a good 20 25 minutes answering those four so there's a lot of energy there there's a lot going on in his mind and and he's trying to to instill it he wanted to bring his values that he'd learned from clemson uh, that he'd had at kansas state with bill snyder who he referenced about 100 times so um but yeah it's not easy that's not an easy job and and so he's got a lot he, of, of the three he would have the, the most pressure yeah, and the one who has the most experience as a head coach is Sonny Dykes uh, at TCU. Talked about the fact, hey, this is the fourth program now uh, that I've taken over. And yet he said this one further along than the other three, right, James? He did say that. And I think that when, when you look at the state of TCU's program, when, when Dykes came in, the cupboard certainly wasn't bare as far as talent was concerned. And as far as a university is concerned, the resources are there to support a high-level football program at TCU that maybe he was lacking at Cal, Louisiana Tech, and even at SMU. Uh, and so we had a conversation with him about that. And he does think that, that his experience as a head coach previously is really informing the way he's working with TCU right now. And that he does think that that sets them up for, for success pretty early on as a program. Joey McGuire, the head coach of the Texas Tech Red Raiders. You know, the other thing that stood out to me was the, the fact that Gary Patterson's name came up quite often, the fact that he's no longer here at Big 12 Media Day. In fact, Jeff, you had a chance to ask Steve Sarkeesian uh, about the newest member of his staff. I did. I did. And uh, it's kind of it's kind of weird. You know, this is the first time the TCU's been at the Big 12 meetings and Gary Patterson has not been their head coach. And, you know, to for, for him to be at Austin's, it's definitely strange. Matt uh, Campbell talked about that. So um, anyway, Here's my hard-hitting question to Steve Sarkeesian. How has Gary Patterson been to work with, and how has he? Uh, what, what influence has he had uh, so far? Yeah, Gary, having Coach Patterson on board has probably been um, something that has excited me of, of most of a lot of the things that we've done this offseason. I've always been intrigued by Coach Patterson from afar. I've always admired his defensive mind. I've always admired the style of play in which his teams played. I've always admired um, his ability to recruit and to project players to different positions in the recruiting process. And so to get him on board, um, which was not easy, you know, I kept kind of swinging on him to, to get him to come down to Austin, uh, has been fantastic. That wasn't the only time, though, Gary Patterson's name came up, Melissa. I thought it was uh, quite funny to hear uh, Sonny Dyke say, hey, you don't usually replace a guy who's got a statue up on campus while he was coaching. I mean, I thought that was funny to hear that. You know, I think it's it's always hard to be the guy that follows the guy, right? But, you know, Sonny Dykes is in a unique position to be successful in that role because of who his father was in Texas football and his great legacy of being a great high school coach and a great collegiate coach, too. And that name carries so much water around these parts. But I, I thought it was really, I totally agree. It was hilarious to see him kind of reference the fact that not only does Gary Patterson have a statue at TCU, it was erected while he was still coaching. So I think he's got a good perspective on it. I think that him spending a year in 2017 as an analyst under Gary Patterson gives him a, a unique opportunity to to just kind of understand the legacy that was built, but also the confidence to go and make his own way too. All right, earlier we heard from Steve Avila, Quentin Johnston. Uh, you also had D Winters and Trey Hodges, Tomlinson. Uh, the one conversation that I had with all four of those that stood out was the fact that I, I get the sense, Jamie, they, they're okay with being picked seventh. Not that they think they're the seventh best team in the league, but that they could surprise some folks from that spot. Do you agree? I totally agree, and you know, I think there's, there's, and Dave Aranda spoke about it a little bit yesterday on the show, it's, there's a difference when you're working in the dark versus when you're working in the light. And I think right now TCU has an opportunity to work a little bit in the background, work a little bit in the dark, get some things right. Obviously, there have been some culture shifts that have happened under Sonny Dykes. Uh, bringing in Coach Kaz as strength and conditioning coach has done wonders for the program in a variety of ways as well. And so now TCU has this opportunity to fly under the radar, get ready to play some football, and just go out and do their job and see where the chips fall. All right, read into Sonny Dykes' comments about quarterback. Jeff, let's start with you. I, I read into it that, that 
Max Duggan is, is going to be the guy. You know, you, he, Sonny, Sonny, and this is something Gary always said too, and I, a lot of coaches say it, manage the offense. You know, that means don't make mistakes. Get the ball where it's supposed to go. And I think that, that Max – is an experienced guy. He knows who the playmakers are. He spent more time with them. Uh, there's probably more of a, a, a trust factor built in there. So, you know, it's not to say that that it couldn't go the other way. But what I read into it is that it's Max Duggan. Jamie, you agree? I think I'm leaning in that same direction. You know, Dykes talked a lot about consistency and what we saw from Chandler last season in the back half of the season and what we saw from him again in the spring was a really, really high uh, ceiling, but he didn't always reach it. So there was some inconsistency there that I think is maybe a little bit concerning to the coaching staff at this point. And, and to Jeff's point about experience, too, if you're looking for a game manager, you're going to go with the guy that has most experience, and that's Max Duggan. Melissa? I think that one of the interesting things was Sonny Dykes said that neither guy has completely shown that they can run this offense today. But I do believe that Max Duggan has a leg up for what both of them said. And it just and just having that familiarity and that confidence and, and, and security with the top targets. You know, he knows how to get Quentin Johnson to the ball. He knows where Tay Barber's going to be out of a break. And I think in Sonny Dykes' offense, it really does fit Max's skill set well. So I expect Duggan to start week one. You know, but he did say when we sat down with him and he said, hey, we'll know, you hope you know six or seven or eight practices in somebody takes the reins as if he doesn't know yet so it could still be a battle out there I mean I, I don't know that his mind's made up completely I guess is what I'm saying well I don't know that a, a, a coach a coach in any sport if their mind right. is ever made up right until they until they see it and throw it throw it out there and see if it sticks I, I bet though in year uh, in in the latter years of Jared Goff Sonny Dykes knew Jared Goff was going to be the starter, though. At Cal. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. I'd hope so. Yeah, you would hope that he would know that. Well, uh, he, he said that usually the head coach is the last one to know who should be starting PC that's true. games, right? That's true. That's true. All right, one other thing, Melissa, you brought up the fact that uh, D. Winters looked different to you. Uh, and all these guys, you could tell, you could see the influence that Kaz and the strength staff has had on them already. You know, this is my first time seeing any of these players in person since the end of last season, right. and it is a marked difference. Yeah. Uh, these guys look bigger, they look stronger, they really harped on just the nutrition aspect of strength and conditioning, which is something I don't think we always think about, and so they're eating differently, they're recovering differently, they're lifting differently, and it's, a, it's made an impact for sure. All right, final thoughts here from this roundtable of experts, whether it be involving realignment, whether it involves... You you know, TCU, whether it involves these new head coaches or players that we're, we're seeing in the league. Jamie, what's your one takeaway from the last two days? I think my biggest takeaway is that the Big 12 is in such a different position now than it was this time last year. You think about eight days after Big 12 media days in 2021, Texas and Oklahoma announced that they're bolting for the SEC, and now we've come full circle to where the Big 12 is in a power of a, a position of power to maybe poach schools from the Pac-12. Obviously, Brett York Mark said yesterday that the Big 12 is open for business, and it seems like with the new energy that the new coaches are bringing in and that these players have brought to these couple of days, it just feels like everything is kind of pulling in the right direction right now for the Big 12. Jeff Wilson? Yeah, I, I, the the 400-pound gorilla or the elephant in the room, whatever you want to call it, is is, is the realignment and the uncertainty that's, that's facing this conference. And, you know, it, they're open for business, great, but shouldn't shouldn't all the schools be open for business too? I mean, I you know there there's no loyalty right now. I, you know the the new commissioner Brett Yormark can say, oh, this is a unified group. Bob Bowlesby said the same thing last year. Uh, you know, is is look, look at TCU's position, Dallas Fort Worth, number four media market, number five media market, huge media market that the SEC doesn't have. What's the SEC's biggest market? Atlanta, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, what, what does the ACC have? You know, if the ACC is a basketball conference, why don't they go get Kansas? Right. You know? So, I mean, I just think that, that while, while it may look like this is these are 12 unified teams with the four that are coming in, I, I wouldn't necessarily buy that. Yeah, yeah, to me, the line when he said the, the Big 12 is open for business, the question to me over the next couple of months we have to answer is, are there any customers? You know, is anyone, is anyone sure. buying? Melissa, any uh, final takeaway from you? To me, this is as wide open as the Big 12 has been going in a while. There's one team that's returning a starting quarterback that they counted on last season. Yeah. And so I'm really excited to see how some of these younger quarterbacks develop, especially with the new first-time head coaches, and just to see what these schools look like four months from now and who's standing at top, who's back at the stadium playing for a championship. I'm anxious to see how Texas and Oklahoma – handle this what is remaining on their schedule whether it's this is the final year in this league or if there's more I'm, I, I just feel that there is a growing animosity 
uh, in this league headed toward those two that's even greater than last year. And horns down is still a penalty. It they is still, it that is, today. It is still a penalty, <laughs> which is that's a whole nother show. But you go back to what Gundy said yesterday, too. I mean, he was so candid about yes. his comments with Texas and Oklahoma, saying that if he was in charge, Texas and Oklahoma wouldn't even be in any of these meetings anymore. Right, right. You know, so, yeah. and, so I think, and, and I think he makes a that. great point. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and I think with the four, if they're in the league, when those four new teams come in, I think they need to be on the road. You know, go to BYU, go to Central Florida, go to Cincinnati, <laughs> go to Houston. Well, that's what the Mountain West no, did to TCU to Houston. last year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, not, not Houston. They they need to, but they need to go to Iowa State. Yeah, and they need to go to West Virginia. <laughs> West Virginia. Yeah, yeah. Do it, treat it that way. Yeah, you you guys have done an amazing job over the last two days at FrogsToday.com and on social media tracking this thing. Yeoman's work on your uh, your parts and really appreciate the time here. Well, same same thing. Thank you. All right, there awesome. we go. All right, Jeff, Jamie, and Melissa joining us here at uh, AT and T Stadium. That's going to wrap things up uh, for day two now of the 2022 Big 12 Media Days, presented by our friends at Railhead Smokehouse. Big thank you to them. I'm Brian Estridge. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next week for another edition of Frogs Today. Roxo Media House.